What is going on everybody and welcome to 2021, the first video of the year and hopefully there will be plenty of others to follow. 2020 was a tough year for a lot of people, including me. Uh, I've talked about that in previous videos. I'm not going to get into it in this video. All I need you to know is that we're grinding. All right. So for today's video, we've got team of the year preparation. Now, what we've seen is EA have dropped headliners as the next promo. They've announced that it's going to be the next promo. It's going to drop on the day that this is uploaded. So there's going to be some ways to make profit throughout headliners, but most of the focus throughout this promo is really going to be how is the market going to react to one team of the year hype and two team of the year hype during another promo because in previous years there's never really been a significant promo before team of the year other than i guess foot miss but that's not really directly before it there's normally two or three weeks in between those promos to where the market can settle and then the, the panic begins but this year we have a pretty significant promo which is headliners happening right before what i anticipate to be team of the year so how is the market going to react to that? So we're going to talk about SBC fodder. We're going to talk about how um, meta cards are going to react and what you should do with the players that you already have uh, in your club. Um, if you have a team right now, should you sell it? Should you keep it? Um, we're going to be talking about all of that in today's episode. So let's start off with the meta cards. If you have um, somebody like, I guess, Neymar, somebody like Mbappe, Messi, Ronaldo, a few of those guys are going to get team of the years themselves, so they'll react a little bit differently. Um, but what are we going to do with Conte? What are we going to do with um, Allison? Some of the cards that I have. Inform Yannick Carrasco. Well, you see there's already two slots right here, and I already sold Inform Lorente, and I already sold Sergio Ramos. Those are two cards that are going to continue to become uh, lower. There's literally no way that they go up other than if Sergio Ramos goes up from SBC fodder, which would be kind of tough. Um, but what is going to happen to the likes of Neymar? So let's start with uh, let's start with him. He's a card that's probably the best gold card in the game. And he's not projected to get a team of the year, at least in the 11 for team of the year. He could, however, get a 12th man team of the year. And I'd say he's probably a top three, maybe top two candidate for getting a 12th man card for team of the year. Right now, we're looking at a Neymar that's already dropped significantly throughout the beginning and end of December. We, we saw him take a huge drop of about 200,000 coins throughout that year. Um, two big drops were at the beginning of December and just a couple of days ago, he took another big drop. So he's at 712,000 on PlayStation, 573,000 on Xbox. You see that first big drop from here all the way down to here. And then he kind of recovers a decent bit and then he drops again. Um, a consistent drop for the last two weeks of December all the way down to 710,000 coins. And that's pretty low. You might say, hey, he's already low. Might be the time to buy for a card that's that good. And honestly, you wouldn't be getting a terrible deal if you did. But what will happen with him is that there's going to be a panic for team of the year that's going to push him down a little bit lower. This Neymar will get lower before team of the year even starts. Once team of the year starts, I'd say especially later in the week, he'd be subject to rising in price um, because the supply for a 91 rated Neymar, it'll be higher during team of the year, but it's still 91 rated Neymar. So there's going to be more people that want to buy this card than sell it unless he gets into team of the year and that's where that uh it gets a little shaky if he is the 12th man and that's in packs what will happen is people that already have this name are going to try to upgrade it um and there will be an initial drop in price for that name gold card um eventually people are going to realize oh i can't afford this other name and they're going to buy him back it'll go up out of team of the year no matter what happens guys no matter what happens i want you to take away that Neymar is going to rise out of Team of the Year. He's going to go up at, at the end of Team of the Year, during the week, and, and the, the week following. He's going to rise. Uh, it's the same for him, the same for uh, Mbappe, the same for pretty much all big, you know, high-rated meta cards. They're going to rise out of Team of the Year. 
but there will be more opportunities to pick them up before Team of the Year starts. So if we went with a card that isn't necessarily a, um, a Team of the Year bound card, but it's still an elite gold card, let's go ahead and take a look over here at um, some of those guys and talk about their price in comparison to a card that's going to be in Team of the Year, like possibly Neymar or definitely Messi and Ronaldo. So we'll go version, we'll go gold, and then we'll sort by price. Look at some of the higher rated guys. N'Golo Kante. That's a good example because N'Golo Kante is not going to get an upgrade, which means that he's going to, one, be in packs during the entire week, okay? But also won't get an upgrade, so nobody's going to replace him. So Kante is still going to be a very good card, but there will be a point where before Team of the Year, just like Neymar, he's going to hit a low point. I want you to buy into that panic, all right? And then he'll start rising and the second half of Team of the Year during the promo, and then out of Team of the Year. Same for Conte right there at an 88 rated card. Now I'm a little bit more nervous for meta cards such as uh, Furlan Mendy. I'm a little bit more nervous for, for cards like him because Furlan Mendy is only 83 rated. And you might say, hey, Elite, Sean, this card last year was only 80 rated and he, he held his value until June, July. You're very correct about that. But there were points during the year where he dropped and then rose back up. This is going to be one of those points of the year. If you have a Furlan Mendy, if you have any meta cards that are like 84 rated Marcial, maybe even 85 rated Rashford, I'd say that's definitely one that I would include in this in this list. If you have an 80 rated Theo Hernandez, um, who goes for 7K, right? That card goes for 7,000 coins right now. He's going to go from 7,000 coins to 2,000 coins and below without any doubt, okay? So let's talk about fodder and let's talk about people's mentality during team of the year. When it comes to SBC fodder, there's going to be SBCs, repeatable and upgrade SBCs during team of the year, but that won't happen on day one. Day one for team of the year is going to be a time where EA is going to capitalize on FIFA points. So they're not going to drop upgrades because if they drop upgrades, then people are going to be distracted by them. They're going to say, okay, I can maybe pack uh, a Van Dyke. I can pack a Neuer. I can pack my Trent Alexander-Arnold out of this upgrade pack. I don't need to buy FIFA points. That's not going to help EA's profit margins. So it's definitely not something they're going to do. The most that they'll do on day one is they'll probably drop a daily SBC that takes you five minutes to do, gives you some sort of average pack in return, maybe untradeable as well. And they'll also possibly drop a player SBC, but I'm thinking they won't drop the player SBC on day one. It's just a possibility. Either way, there isn't going to be a ton of content to do in terms of upgrades and repeatable stuff because they want the focus to be FIFA points and that's going to be the only way uh, that you pack a team of the year at the beginning of, uh, of the promo. They, they want to capitalize on that. You've got everybody focused on the new cards. You've got everybody focused on the team of the year cards that have been released and their prices. What they're not going to be focused on yet is picking up Neymar, picking up Mbappe, picking up Conte, picking up any of these guys that are on your screen and beyond. That's not going to be a majority of the community. However, by the middle of team of the year, you're going to see everybody's FIFA points are gone other than the big content creators. Everybody's done with their FIFA points because being patient and, 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 and holding those FIFA points is going to be impossible. Uh, it is so hard to be patient when all these this hype and team of the year and, and these good packs are out. Um, it's very hard to hold your FIFA points. So the FIFA points will be gone, okay? And Team of the Year will not nearly have as much hype midweek as it did on day one. And then on top of that, you've got people that are looking to build their teams fully, maybe building around a Team of the Year card they packed or just build their, their teams that they were looking at before Team of the Year. And that's when the rise is going to start happening. On top of that, there's less supply. Less people are opening packs with, with FIFA points. Less people are, are hitting the market with, with their cards. So day one and day two is still going to be good times to buy. Although I think that the lowest point will be before team of the year, especially for those high rated metas. Uh, but do not wait until midweek of team of the year to start buying because that's what the casuals are going to do. That's what the uh, majority of the community is going to do after all the, the hype is gone on day one. 
uh, after all of all of that's done on, on day two and day three comes and the new players get involved and they're out of FIFA points by then, they're going to start focusing on, okay, how can I make coins off of Team of the Year? Yet on day one, when everything is going crazy, nobody's capitalizing other than us, okay? So day one is going to be where most of the profit investments are going to actually pay off for us. And we'll be able to make profit during Team of the Year. We won't even have to hold until the week after. We can actually sell it later in the week during Team of the Year. So hopefully that makes sense. As I said, uh, I was going to get into that. We're going to get into uh, SBC fodder. So the first thing is gold cards. The first thing is gold cards and gold rares, right? Gold rares right now, and thank God for this filter. And this filter of gold rare, this wasn't around during Team of the Year last year. So this will be around this time. If they do end up dropping SBCs where you need seven gold rares in the team and you get yourself like, I don't know, 281 pluses. I don't know how it's going to work this year. Uh, these are going to go up in price. But again, it's not going to be on day one. So do not invest in gold rare fodder before Team of the Year. You can wait until day one of Team of the Year to invest in gold rare fodder. And then you can maybe pick up some, uh, some even better cards as fodder maybe a card that's like 81 rated um or 82 rated for discard price and that way you kind of double up on the investment i would wait until uh day one and day two of team of year to pick up 83 rated cards because again there's probably not going to be many sbcs on day one other than that daily sbc so those are going to be very low there's no reason to pretty much pre-jack on the um on the uh, 83 rated, 82 rated, 84 rated investments, honestly, or gold rares. You can wait until team of the year to do that. Uh, but what you cannot do is wait until uh, team of the year to pick up your, your Neymars and Mbappes because that's what everybody's going to be waiting for. They're going to wait for that supply. But before team of the year, nobody's buying. Everybody's selling. Everybody's selling. They get low. During team of the year, sure, you got the supply from the packs, but you don't have the supply um from people selling their their weekend league teams anymore or, or selling their, their club you don't have that supply anymore in fact it's the opposite you have the people waiting for that oh wins buy time wins buy time win during team of the year do i buy and a couple people are going to find that time on day one a couple people are going to find that time on day two but by day three day four day five people are going to be like okay uh, team of the year is uh it's, it's getting done now we're halfway through i've got to buy before it's too late and that's going to cause a rise in prices for, for meta cards. Anything that's usable is going to go up in the second half of Team of the Year. And that's not even mentioning buying power. I haven't even talked about that in this episode, although it's something that it's something that I've talked about in previous episodes. Um, buying power from promos causes the market to overall rise, actually. Sure, there's going to be cards that drop. There's going to be lower rated cards that hit the market so much that the demand just can't keep up anymore. And that's going to be the case for the likes of Theo Hernandez. He's 80 rated. He's a left back and he's going for, for 7K still. He's not going to be that much once Team of the Year is over. It's because there's just too much supply for that 80 rated card. That card. I wouldn't be surprised if a period of Team of the Year he hits like near discard price. Just because he's so low rated. Um, so yeah, those are all things that you need to keep your eye out for, uh, for Team of the Year. And that's going to wrap it up for today's episode on Team of the Year. It's going to be the first episode for, for preparing for Team of the Year, uh, but it's not going to be the last. Uh, we're going to upload a ton of Team of the Year videos, and I might sprinkle a headliner uh, video in for you guys in the next couple of days, uh, depending on how well this promo goes. Uh, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Drop a like on the video for the first video of 2021. Hopefully we can get some momentum going. Have a great year. I hope you guys have a great year. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.